the two main zombie movies I'm going to compare this to is 28 Days Later and World War Z. Now, I actually liked World War Z a lot. I thought the spectacle and the scope when you see all the, the zombies trying to climb the wall, I thought that was great imagery. But I do feel like it lost a bit of just that grit and that savagery of a zombie attack where we see in 28 Days Later, even Walking Dead. So I think if you're, if you're a fan of World War Z and that kind of epic epic scale you may be a little disappointed with this one it can feel a little a little localized a little small but if you like just that grit and savagery and that i think really zombie ethos you're gonna love this one so let me start with the zombie aspects what i really liked about this movie was how the zombies would let out these almost war cries these blood curdling cries and it was like when a zombie would spot you would just let out a cry and then all the other zombies would start letting out cries and it was like they were some kind of pack some herd of animals or like a, like a military formation I thought it was very cool and then also they were doing this thing where they were stacking things like chairs and they were just milling around these giant stacks of all this garbage that they've compiled and for me it just kind of symbolize just the mindless, obsessive, monotonous nature of a zombie existence. And the actual visuals of the zombies when you were looking at them, it wasn't great. And this was probably one of the weakest aspects of the movie. But as far as actual gore and actual carnage, this was pretty good. We got some great gory moments. And then at the end, there is a very satisfying climactic battle, kind of a bloodbath. And I think that the fact that we didn't get that much gore and that much carnage throughout the movie, it just made this final battle hit even harder. It was such a good battle at the end that you did feel satisfied. You get the zombies tearing into people and the limbs getting hacked off. So the gore and carnage was good. And then small things that I haven't seen in other zombie movies that I liked, you know, someone making someone strip at gunpoint because they want to check to see if they're bitten. It's those little things like that, those little touches that I thought the movie did well. And then another thing I really liked in this movie that I think gets lost in a movie like World War Z is the little human elements where everything's changed in the zombie ap apocalypse. It's new priorities, everyone's armed, everything's different, but there's those little human touches that we cling to and that carry us through and we keep right till our death or the end of the world. Now, one of them is music and we see someone when a zombie apocalypse you have to get rid of everything you have to strip down it's very minimalistic you there's all these things that you love but you've got to part with and you're living a very reduced existence but she is carrying around this little piano this tiny little piano that she's able to carry around and it's mobile and she can carry it but yet it connects her to to music and the world she once knew another thing is jokes and we hear a bunch of these little corny jokes throughout the movie but those are the kind of things that in a zombie apocalypse, you can still tell jokes. And if you can tell jokes and make other people laugh and laugh yourself, in some sense, it, that's your connection to the world that you once knew. And then at another part of the movie, they find a jar of pickles. And again, it's just those little things that we take for granted so much in our existence. But in this kind of altered state, a jar of pickles, it's like a delicacy from another time. And there's this great scene of them divvying out the pickles, them eating the pickles before the big battle, the calm before the storm, but I will say comparing it to 28 Days Later, and well, I think 28 Days Later might edge this one out, 28 Days Later had a couple of things. One, the fun of a zombie apocalypse that, yeah, it's horrible, but there are things that you can do that you can't do in normal life, like go to a, a supermarket and just go through the aisles and steal. It's not really stealing, but just go through the aisles and eat food right right from the, from the aisles. So th those kind of fun elements, and then also the darker elements, this, the zombies were the only evil, 28 Days Later really explored human evil and how certain humans will exploit the zombie situation to really do evil things or just be driven to sub such desperate measures they'll engage in acts that are just as monstrous as the zombies. And then again, helping you feel like it's human and relatable. We got a great cast of characters. Now, right from the start, the first, the only black character we see, the first to die, He's holding a shotgun, it reminds you a lot of Pulp Fiction, Marcellus Wallace, but he's great. Again, just the look and then a little bit of, of acting from him and immediately you identify and relate to him. He has this great moment with his friend, the protagonist. They're both lying there looking up at the sky. There's a blood stain all over, all over the one guy, just great aesthetics. And they're talking about um, what would you do if you would have known that the apocalypse is coming and one's talking about he would have told the person he liked how he felt, the other saying he would have splurged and took his daughter to Disneyland like she always wanted. Just this great human connection that again, early in the movie really makes you feel like it's not just this horrible outbreak and this, this spectacle. No, these are real people going through something. And our protagonist is really great. He reminds you of that classic hero archetype of the kind of uptight guy who was a nerd in high school, has kind of been 
quiet, meek guy his whole life, but suddenly greatness is thrust upon him, as they say, and suddenly he's in this environment, and surprisingly, he really does thrive, and he's very competent and very able to step up and do what needs to be done. And then there's this comic relief character. Seems like he came straight from Shaun of the Dead or something. He keeps jumping out and scaring them. It's almost like he doesn't even realize there's a zombie apocalypse going on, or at the very least, he hasn't changed his behavior one iota. He's the exact same guy post-apocalypse that he was beforehand. And then the aesthetics of this movie, the look and feel, you could say, was fantastic. First of all, the music. Perfect music for this kind of zombie apocalypse. It's this great instrumental with this chanting, this kind of beautiful but kind of sinister chanting overlaid on top. It was perfect. The whole feel of it, in a movie like World War Z, again, it's more apocalyptic and the weapons you have they're military weapons and it's a militarized response and you have m16s and things like that here you have hatchets you have machetes you have old rifles things that look like they've been in the family passed down for generations just waiting to be used and it's kind of this ragtag gathering these weapons that in some sense i think it's kind of more of a more of an authentic zombie feel and then the setting this kind of backwoods almost hillbilly chic, the kind of the trailers and the trailer park and the grunge and the dilapidated, the pickup trucks, the beer. It was just a great setting that I think, in some sense, I think really matched the zombie genre great. And then some great surreal imagery as well, the kind of things that you'd never see in normal life, but in a zombie apocalypse where in some sense anything goes, you might, you know, who knows what you'd see. So we see a girl and she's walking, first of all, a little girl trudging cross country, something you'd never see in real life, and she's carrying this piano that's a small piano but it's it's big for her and then she's met by uh, she's walking on the road and this this race car pulls up and this guy comes out with this full race car get up and then also a gun and it's just this great visual and then he has the pink the pink race car behind him and we get the shot of the two of them and again it's just a surreal absurdism that you'd never see i'll end it there last thing i'll say a negative for some people might be it's french so you have to watch in subtitles but i don't think it's that big a deal because it's not a dialogue heavy movie at all. There's not that much dialogue, so you're not going to be doing a ton of reading. And then also the dialogue that is, is it's pretty common standard dialogue. It's not like very idiom idiomatic where a lot's going to get lost in translation in um, a different genre like comedy. So I wouldn't be put off, e even if you're not a big subtitles person, I wouldn't be put off by it. I would still give this one a chance because like I say, terrific movie right up there with best zombie movies of all time for me. Um, 28 Days Later probably edges it out, but other than that, again, World War Z I liked a lot, and I think that in some ways you can't compare them because it's apples and oranges, um, but I'd say probably this one and maybe World War Z were t would be tied in these kind of different flavors of zombie movies, but again, right at the top um, with 28 Days Later and World War Z, Z, so definitely worth a watch, definitely check it out.